Indeed. my lecture today is communication. In the event of an invasion, enemy paratroopers will try to capture the following points. Gasometer here, railway bridge there, telephone exchange here, and the water reservoir there. Now those four points out of action, the whole town will be crippled. No gas, no trains, no telephones and no water. Now, as you know, very few of us can survive for long without water to drink. I've been managing it for years. <laughs> In short, all these parts of the town are absolutely vital. So the object of our exercise is to prevent the enemy from getting his taking control of our vital parts. <laughs> yes, I suppose you could put it that way. Uh... Now, we should station two men at each of these strategic points. And in the event of an attack, one man will rush immediately to the nearest telephone box and phone me here at the church hall. As you get, sir. If one man is phoning you, what happens to the man who's left behind? 
He'll be rushing the other way. <laughs> Walker, Walker. This is not a matter for levity. No, no. The other man will pin the enemy down with constant withering fire. Right. That might be a bit difficult, sir, constant withering fire. We've only got five rounds each. <laughs> <laughs> we have to make each shot tell then, won't we? Yes, sir. Now, you'll notice that I've pinpointed on the map the nearest telephone box to the points concerned. There's one here, 100 yards away from the, uh, from the railway bridge, another one 50 yards from the gasometer here, and one outside the gates of the reservoir there. Now, our problem is the telephone exchange, because the nearest one to that is over half a mile away down here, so there would inevitably be some delay in summoning help. Well, perhaps it would save time, sir, if we were to use one of the telephones in the exchange. What? What? Well, it would save time, wouldn't oh, yeah. it? <laughs> Very good. Well done, Wilson. Thank you. Now, as soon as I get a call, I shall relieve you at the head of a swift mobile attacking unit. Now, by the way, see that your bicycles are all in good working order. There's <laughs> uh, just one thing, yes, sir. Uh, what happens if the phone box is out, uh, out of action? Yeah. Well, in that case, we should just have to improvise as usual, Fraser, shouldn't we? Anybody got any suggestions? Yes, sir, I've got several suggestions. Wilson, sir. you better write all this down. All right, sir, yes. Sir. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, sir. Yes. Why doesn't one of us climb to the top of the gasometer and heliograph down onto the church hall? That's a long way for one man to heliograph. <laughs> I don't think I quite follow you, Joan. Well, it's a heliograph, so you get the rays of the sun on a mirror, so we used to signal like that in India, the northwest frontier, sir, when we was fighting the Pathans. Those the boys, the Pathans, sir, come out with a long knife and try and stick yes, it Yes, yes, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could heliograph, sir, we could heliograph. Well, there's only one snag, and that is that you can't see the gasometer from the church hall. Couldn't one of us be on top of the church tower? Well, that's good. That's very good. Very good idea. Make a note of that, Wilson. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, there is one slight snag, though. All these strategic points are facing in different directions, so the man might not be looking in the right direction at the right time. He might be walking around. Yes, yes, that's pretty good. What have we got so far, Wilson? Well, sir, at the moment we've got uh, Jones on top of the gas works flashing his uh, heliograph. <laughs> Man on top of the tar, sort of, <laughs> just <laughs> ridiculous, just walking around. <laughs> I'm not too happy about Jones's heliograph. No. I mean, you can't rely on the sun. It might be raining. Yeah, what about the old tic tac in then, sir? Hmm? Tic tac. Yeah, tic tac and you know, like they do at the race course, you know, the sort of thing? Mm. I mean, when they're sort of signalling the odds. I mean, all you need is a pair of white gloves, so your hands sharp, and you're away. Well, I have a rather nice pair of white evening gloves I could let you have, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I used to wear them at the annual ball, the Civil Service store staff party. It was, it was a long time ago. But people don't bother now. I was a pity, because I... Never feel a gentleman is properly dressed unless he's wearing his gloves. <laughs> Why don't we shoot a hole in the top of the gasometer and set fire to it? Better see that for miles, sir. <laughs> I think you're getting into the realms of fantasy now, Joan. Well, that's nice, isn't he? Asks for some advice and then sneers at you. It's all right, all right. All right, Joan, Joan, I know how to get a signal from the railway bridge. You tap, tap, tap on the railway line, and you can hear that furlong after furlong, sir, as if you lay your ear on the railway line. Oh, but, yeah, a train may come along and run over your ear. Oh, silly. <laughs> but be on the railway line, you can hear the train yes, coming. Right, but don't think we're all going to that Settle down now. Well, at least it stimulated a very lively discussion. But in the meantime, you must assume that the telephones are in working order. 
um, sir, yeah. I'm not allowed to use public telephone boxes, so my mum says it's unhygienic. You can catch things from the receiver. <laughs> you can always hold it away from your face. Oh, I tried that once, sir. But I couldn't hear. If you don't really know how to use a telephone box. No. What do you do when you want to make a call? Oh, Uncle Arthur lets me use the one at the bank. A fact. Really? A fact. I don't use it very often. I'm very glad to hear it. Not only when I'm phoning me auntie in Scotland. I'll speak to you later, Wilson. <laughs> I'm not very good at automatic telephone boxes either. I, I, I always get so muddled up. You see, I, I'm, I'm quite hopeless at, at, at machines. Yes. Well, the only one thing I shall have to show you how to use a telephone box. Oh, come on, you've got to be a this right This is the really benefit of those who don't out. know how to use one. All right? All right. Now, pay attention. I still don't like it, Mr. Goffrey. My mum says you can get mastiffs in your ear. Pike. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd better do it by numbers. On the command one, you pick up the receiver with the left hand. On the command two, you put the coins in the box. Ching, 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 ching. Ching, 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 ching. Then on the, what's this ching, ching? ching. <laughs> the coins dropping into the box. Oh, I see. Now, don't be put off by this noise. It's perfectly normal. <laughs> the operator will then say, number, please. And you give the number here, of course, which is Warmington on C. Three, three, three. Uh, yes, yes, I know the number. <laughs> Then the operator will say, I'm connecting you, and when I answer, you press button A. Is that clear? Uh, yes, sir. Right. Now, let's, uh, let's have a go, shall we? You, you be the operator, Wilson. Oh, right. right. One. Two. 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 Changing. 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 Come on, Wilson. Uh, come on. Number, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, number, please, yes. Warmington on C333. Oh, get on with it, Wilson. Oh, what, sir? I'm connecting you. Oh, I see, I'm so sorry, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm connecting you. Oh, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. You're not allowed to put the tuttons in until the operator gives you information to. You know, Jonesy, you put the pennies in first. No, 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 Jonesy. No, 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 there's only one way to settle it. We must do this under actual combat conditions. Now we'll all assemble at the telephone box outside the gates of the reservoir there. Right, fall the men in. All right, uh, just fall out and get all your equipment. Thank you very much. Good Grant and know the thumbs are up in England. A sign that shows that everything's okay. The voice have brought a word back home to England. For over there they always used to say. Doubles? Gobble Jones? Yes. Come with me at once. How dare you boys swim in this reservoir? Do you realise that we have to drink that water? We've not been doing any harm. Besides, we've had our costumes on, so why can't we swim in it? You have no right to do anything in it. I'll clear off at once. You better do what the soldiers say. Them's not soldiers, they're home guards. It's old Jones the Butcher and old Frosty Face from the bank. Hello. <laughs> I'll clear off. Platoon! Forward! Take this boy's name, Sergeant. box two at a time. Uh, Pike and Godfrey first. Corporal? Sir? Form the rest of the men up in a queue, will you? Right, sir. Outside. Sir? Right. Come along, Pike and Godfrey. Leave your rifle. Right, form the queue outside. Do what the officer said. Come along now. Right. right. 
Two grand for this pint. <laughs> now, <laughs> take the receiver in the left hand pike. Pike. <laughs> Would you turn? I can't talk to your back, boy. Turn round. I'm sorry, sir. This is where I got in. <laughs> well, we'll have to go on and start again. <laughs> <laughs> right, Godfrey, you go first. <laughs> right. Now, take the receiver in the left hand and he. Godfrey. <laughs> Godfrey, you take your arm from my, from my throat. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help it's, it's the way I came in. Well, go out and come in again. <laughs> now, take the receiver. In the left hand. Look, it's no use. I, I shall have to take you one at a time. It, go out, Godfrey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now then, Pike. <laughs> right. Now, take these two pennies. Lift the receiver with your left hand. We'll get it up to your ear, boy. It won't harm you. And it... <laughs> Clear off. <laughs> now, I want you to make a telephone call to me at the church hall. There'll be no answer, of course, because I'm not there. <laughs> so, you can press button B and get your money back. You see? Right. Now, are you ready? Just a minute, just a moment. <laughs> Wilson! Wilson! Yes, yeah, sir? Tell that boy to go away. <laughs> uh, if, right. you, if you have to do that, would you do it somewhere else? <laughs> Said to him, ching 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 ching. <laughs> right. Number, please. Uh, a warming drum, C. <coughs> I've forgotten the number. You stupid boy. It's warming drum, on C. Just a moment. <laughs> Yes. Just checking on the number. Oh, yes. Uh, three, 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 sir. Quite correct. Warning to now, C333, please. I'm trying to connect you. Thank you. Now, just let it ring for a bit and then press button B. <coughs> Why did you press button A? <laughs> No. Oh, hello, ma'am. Is that you, Frank? Where are you speaking from? Oh, I'm in, a, I'm in a phone box outside the waterworks. I thought I told you never to use a public phone box. <laughs> well, it's not my fault, ma'am. Mr. Manry made me. Did he indeed? Well, I shall have a few words to say to him next time I see him. Oh, he's here now. Right. You let me speak to him, then. <laughs> ma'am wants to speak to you, Mr. Manry. Really? <laughs> Mrs. Pike, what are you doing in my office? I brought Frank's clean scarf down for him to wear. He'll catch his death without it, and I just happened to hear the telephone ring. Yes, but even so... Now, I Mr. Mannering, what's the idea of you letting my Frank use a public telephone oh, box? He's never a, used one of those in his thought. life before, and just because... Wilson! Wilson! <laughs> Come and sort this out, will you? Mrs. Pike on the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boy. Frank. Come on, Frank. Come along. Come along. Right. 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 Hello. Hello, Mr. 
murders. Oh, it's you, Arthur. I should have thought you would have known better than to have let Frank use a public telephone well, box. Well, it's not my fault, Mavis. Of course it's your fault. Well, uh, Mavis, I really think you... You molly coddle that boy far too much. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Captain Manning thinks so too. I, I really think you're being rather silly. Oh, I'm silly, am I? Well, you're very silly if you think that I'm only here to administer to all your little comforts every evening. Oh, now, Mavis, please. Have you think sake. that you've only got to knock on my door and I shall come running? Uh, ma ma I've never asked you to run, Mavis. <laughs> You take me for granted, Arthur. You've always taken me for no, granted, and I'm please. not going to stand for it any longer. No, please, mate. Please. She's hung up, sir. Now, what, what am I going to do now? I don't know what you're going to do. I've got a platoon to run. I can't sort your domestic squabbles out. No, no. <laughs> Get the next man in here. All right, quickly. sir. But the next one, kindly come this way, please. As quick as you can. Come on. Of all the absurd ideas, showing us how to use a telephone box. Yeah, Joe, it's a good job we didn't have any telephones in the Sudan. Otherwise, them fuzzy wuzzies would come along with their big knives and cut it off before you could say... <laughs> If it wasn't for that stupid boy Pike and that old fool Godfrey, we wouldn't be all be stuck here wasting our time. <laughs> hey. What are you queuing up for? We're waiting to make telephone calls. What do you say, Mrs. Fox? He says they're queuing up for telephone calls. Here, yeah. what's the top? What are they waiting for? Phone calls. Here, uh, Taffy, look, you take my place, mate. I'm in no hurry. Um, young man, why are you queuing up for telephone calls? Haven't you heard? No, what? They're going on ration tomorrow. <laughs> Do you hear that? They're going to ration telephone calls. <laughs> They're going to ration phone calls. When? Tomorrow. Here, yeah, listen, if you ladies take my tip, you'll make as many as you can now, because after the day, you're only going to be allowed one a month. <laughs> oh, my goodness me, did you hear that? We're only going to be allowed one a month. It's a good job we joined the queue. I knew there was something going on. You're quite right. Yeah, listen, I'll tell you what, as a special favour, when it's not finished, I'll stand guard outside. You can make as many as you like, ten or a time, all right? Oh, well, that's that ever so kind of you. <laughs> I'll take the bookings now. Yes. Well, here you are, young man. Here's half the crowd. I'll have five. Five? I'll have ten. Ten, right. I'll have twenty. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> In that case, I'd better have some more. Oh, well, I'm then uh, I'll have another three. Uh, right, yes. Yeah. The night we met, there was magic and in the air. Hello, right, what's the matter? Oh, George, you'll have to keep watch. Dark, cold out there. There's going to be a heavy raid on London ranges. Listen to all of those planes going on. Yeah, let's hope a few less of them come back. You better have my five rounds. Thank you. You got tops for the phone? I did. Never mind, never mind. I'll reverse the charges. <laughs> Observation. It's a building here. 
Sure. Yes, you can tell by the outline. You see, you've got that high wing and that little bit that uh, sticks out of the tail there, you see? It's all right, all right, Wilson. We all know you came top in aircraft recognition. No, sir. No, I, I came top. He, he, he comes second. Yes, all right, all right, all right. Where's Walker? He went to phone you. Well, that was half an hour ago. I expect he's run off. Uh, I never did think he was any good. That's cowardice in the face of the enemy. Number one, fuel punishment. Have to tie him to the wheel of a gun carriage for that time. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a gun carriage, Mr. Jones. Then we'll just have to improvise, quiet, won't we? Be quiet, be quiet. I can't understand why that plane hasn't sunk. Well, you see, the reservoir's half empty. See, the, actually, the aircraft is sort of kind of sitting on the bottom. Normally, when the reservoir's full, it's uh, 16 foot deep, you know. Quite a lot. Wilson, hmm? I want to know how to tackle the plane. I'm not interested in the details of the waterworks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Uh, yeah? Uh, do you think I might... Why? Oh, yes, go <laughs> No sign of anybody in the plane. Perhaps they parachuted out. Permission to speak, sir. Yeah. Why don't you call them to surrender in official tones? And if they do not answer, you'll be cognizant of the fact that they are not there and have sprung down previous. <laughs> What's the German for surrender? I don't know, sir, but if they want you to put their hands up, they shout, Handy hop, they shout, Handy hop. Yes, I mean, you've told us that before, Jim. Oh, it's worth a go, I suppose. No use. It's too dark. They couldn't see us anyway. We need something white to wave. Anybody wearing a white shirt? No, sir. Yeah. Uh, Pike, Pike, take that, uh, take that uh, scarf. Uh, I can't take this off. I'll oh, catch you dead. No, darling, boy. <laughs> Your mum will be furious when she finds oh. out. She really will. And oh. she's not forgiving you, Uncle Arthur. What you said to her on the phone. All right, Frank. All right. Don't she's been no. going on. Yeah. I want you to no. wave this, no. Corporal. No. 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 Right, sir. Right, sir. No. And I think it would be better if we all shouted in unison. Yes, yes right. Sir. Right. All right, come on. Hey! 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 Let me have a pot at them, sir. No, no, no. A pot no, at them, no, sir. No, no, sir. No. Let me, sir. No. They must be taken alive. Bloody cheek. <laughs> I've never heard you swear before, sir. I never felt like this before, Wilson. Damn foreigners. Come over here and then have the cheek to fire at us. <laughs> anyway, time they were taught a lesson. They're up against us this time. People with guts. Yes, sir. Corporal Jones? Yes, sir. Go and phone to GHQ for help at once. Right, sir. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't know the number. I do, sir. Warmington on C333. Don't be silly. It's a church hall. There's nobody there. We're all here. <laughs> here we are. 166. Right, sir. Sir. Now commit that number to memory, yes, sir. and after you've used the phone, yes, destroy it. Memorize and then destroy the phone. The paper, right. the paper, the paper, the paper. <laughs> now spread it out, man. Right. Keep well down. C991. 
did you say was a free French pilot? Yes, that's right. Mm, what did you say? Well, I told him straight. I said a free French pilot you may be. It's still going to cost you one nine to see the film. Dorian, <laughs> <laughs> you better cash up now, Dorian. The main picture's just started. And don't forget to put down all the servicemen who got in half price. Very well, Mr. Cheese, right? How many hours have we got in tonight then, Betty? Uh, let's see, uh, two sailors, 12 soldiers, oh no, 13 counting that nice major that comes every week. Oh, yes, you Major Brooks. Mm. Major Brooks, Major Brooks, can you help me? Oh, certainly, <laughs> sir. Tonight, one of our aircraft is missing. I thought it was one of theirs. <laughs> Now, one of our aircraft is missing. Went up five minutes ago. Yeah, but it's come down now. No, sir, it doesn't come down till 10.30. If you hurry, you'll just be able to catch it. Eric Portman and Googie Withers are in it. Are they? <laughs> Why are they shooting at us? They're not still shooting it. It's finished. It isn't, you know. Listen. It's one of them. How about that? Now, listen, you put that telephone down at once, otherwise I'll send a policeman round to that box. <sighs> Honestly, some people. Hello. Major Brooks. Don't go. Major... Oh, that isn't. I've run out of pennies. In case of emergency, lift receiver and press button. Emergency? <laughs> what service would you like? Fire, police or ambulance? Hello, hello. There's an enemy plane bomb down in the reservoir. I want General HQ headquarters. Well, I'm sorry, I can only get you fire, police, or ambulance. <laughs> uh, is the plane on fire? No, no, not on fire. Well, you won't want the fire service then, will you? <laughs> uh, just a minute. What about ambulance? Anybody hurt? No, nobody hurt, no. <laughs> Well, it might be now. <laughs> I don't think I'll send an ambulance just on the off chance. Uh, what about the police? Is the plane causing obstruction? No, not truthfully, no, no. Well, what's it doing then? He's shooting at us. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. <laughs> I wish I could help you, but I only deal with emergencies. Ta -ta. Ta -ta. No, 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 come back. Come back. Come what? back. Put that line out. Who's that? Oh, it's you, is it? What are you doing, flashing your torch? Don't you know there are enemy planes overhead? Yeah, and there's enemy plane down here, too. What are you talking about? There's an enemy plane crashed in the reservoir. Well, why aren't you doing something about it? You're in the home guard. What are you doing hiding in this phone box? <laughs> hiding? I'm not hiding. I'm trying to do get general headquarters area command. I am. I've, I've run out of pennies. Oh, come here. Shove over. I'll get it for you. Oh, you've got your pennies. No, but I'll think of something. I may be wrong, but I'm perfectly willing. Taking them long enough to get here from GHQ. Yeah, they must have got held up. I don't know how we're going to get these Germans to surrender. Uh, they could hold up for days. I'm from GHQ, Lieutenant Hope Bruce, Coast Team Guards. Captain Mannering, Home Guard. <laughs> Tom Wilson. How do you do? Are they still shooting out there? Yes, I've been at it for the past hour. I'm ready in position, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I've got the reservoir completely surrounded. Well, you better get your men. You better get your men back out of the way, Mannering. We can't expect home guards to tackle a situation like this. It's a job for the regular army. We've managed pretty well up to now. Managed what? 
They haven't surrendered yet, have they? I can't understand why that damn plane hasn't sunk. You see, the reservoir's half empty, and actually the aircraft is uh, just sort of uh, sitting on the bottom. Well, I can see that, Sergeant. Uh, what a complete fool, you know. Oh. <laughs> so do I. Uh, there's only one thing for it. We'll just have to lob a few mortar bombs onto that plane. That'll soon fetch them out. Right, sir. I'll get the men to stand by. You can't do that. I beg your That's the whole town's water supply. You'll crack the bottom of the reservoir. Now, when I want your opinion, Captain, I'll ask for it. Sergeant Waller, cancel the order for those mortar bombs. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Taffy. Oh, Joe. Where have you been, Walker? Oh, I've been having a word with the bloke in charge of the reservoir. It cost me five bob, but he's done it. Done what? He's opened the sluices. In about two hours' time, that water will be right to the top. They'll have to swim for it. <coughs> Unless I want to sit on the aerial. <laughs> well done, Walker. I've decided what we're going to do, Mannering. We're going to sit here till we starve them out. Oh, I hardly think that'll be necessary. I expect them to surrender in about two hours' time. Oh, why? See, the fact is, they do not like it up them. <laughs> <laughs> they can't stand it, you see. They really oh, can't. Well, you know what well, I think we can safely leave the mopping up to the cold stream yeah. guard. Very good idea. Carry on. Okay.